Uh, good evening to one and all. Uh, I'm Dr. Amrita from Shankarai Hospital, Shimoga, and today my topic of presentation is role of newer drugs in glaucoma management under the guidance of Dr. Kamla, ma'am. So glaucoma is a group of progressive optic neuropathy which is characterized by typical damage to optic nerve head and associated visual dysfunction. The burden of irreversible vision loss from glaucoma continues to rise. An increase of intraocular pressure is the only and the primary modifiable risk factor identified to prevent glaucomatous vision loss. Hence, medical management remains the first line of treatment for reducing the IOP. So why do we need newer drugs? So glaucoma is a neurodegenerative condition. It leads to retinal ganglion cell death, hence need for neuroprotective agents. And we need those topical anti-glaucoma drugs which have less systemic side effects, need for preservative free drugs, and additional benefits of the newer drugs. So innovative hypertensive drugs, these are the new, uh, newer anti-glaucoma uh, medications, rokinase inhibitors, adenosine receptor agonists, nitric oxide donors, and small interference RNAs. As we all know, the medical management of the reduction of IOP is either by decreasing the aqueous humor production or by increasing the aqueous uh, outflow, that is either by the conventional or trabecular meshwork pathway or by the unconventional, that is UVS clear pathway. So let us see by what mechanisms these drugs act. So rho kinase inhibitors, the rho family after binding to GTP becomes activated rho and then it binds to rho kinases which can phosphorylate myosin light chain kinase and limb kinase. After phosphorylation of these, it actually leads to increased stiffness of the Schlem canal cells and trabecular meshwork cells, ultimately leading to increased aqueous outflow resistance. So because of increased aqueous outflow resistance, there is increase in intraocular pressure. Rho kinase inhibitors will inhibit these rho kinases and hence decrease the aqueous humor outflow resistance and thereby decreasing the intraocular pressure. Therefore, the mechanism of rho kinase inhibitors are increasing the number of Schlem canal endothelial pores, relaxes trabecular meshwork smooth muscle cells, and lowers the episcleral venous pressure. We also have additional benefits of these rho kinase inhibitors by increasing the optic nerve head blood flow and thereby increasing the ganglion cell survival and neuroprotection. It also facilitates corneal endothelial bone healing and also reduces blood scarring in glaucoma surgery. So the commercially available rokinase inhibitors are ribasudil and netarsudil. Netarsudil, because of its norepinephrine transporter inhibitor, it has an additional advantage of decreasing the aqueous humor production as well as decreasing the episcleral venous pressure. The side effects include conjunctival hyperemia, subconjunctival hemorrhage, cornea vertical later, allergic conjunctivitis, blepharitis. And these rho kinase inhibitors are used in open angle glaucoma and ocular hypertension, and it is not used in pregnancy and lactation. Coming to the next group of drugs, that is A1 receptor agonist or adenosine receptor agonist. Trebodenosone A1 receptor agonist acts on ciliary body and decreases the aqueous humor production. It also has another mechanism of action uh, by acting on A1 receptor on trabecular meshwork cells. It causes the release of matrix metalloprotease, which removes the type of collagen from extracellular matrix of trabecular meshwork and improves trabecular outflow of aqueous humor. Thus, adenosine receptor agonist has dual mechanism of action by reducing the aqueous humor production, also improves trabecular outflow of aqueous humor. Next group of drugs include nitric oxide donors. They are large conductance calcium activated potassium channels. The nitric oxide release in trabecular meshwork activates ion channels to provoke relaxation of smooth muscle cells. We have one drug that is latinoprostein B0 uh, under the name of Vizelta. Let us see the mechanism of action. By the action of corneal esterase, latinoprostein B0 will be uh, converted to latinoprostic acid and butane diol mononitrate. Latinoprostic acid is an active metabolite. As we all know, it is a prostaglandin analog, PGF2 alpha analog, thus increases the UVS clearance outflow. Butane diol mononitrate again gets converted and we get another active metabolite that is nitric oxide, which helps in increasing the trabecular outflow. So this is the mechanism by which a nitric oxide donor, that is latinoprostein, do not help in um, reducing the intraocular pressure by dual mechanism, increasing the spiral outflow as well as increasing the trabecular meshwork outflow. 
Next group of drugs include small interference RNA. By blocking beta-2 adrenergic receptor via specific gene silencing, they help in reducing aqueous tumor production. Bamosiran is available. So this is the summer. So those drugs which help in increasing the trabecular measurement outflow are ROC inhibitors, A1 receptor agonists, and nitric oxide donors, which increase humor scleral outflow are nitric oxide donors, and which decrease aqueous tumor production is metaxodil, which is a ROC kinase inhibitor, A1 receptor agonist, and small interference RNA. Apart from this, we also have investigation cannabinoids and lactin kurenic de uh, derivatives. Cannabinoids help in reducing the intraocular pressure by reducing the uh, aqueous tumor production and lactin kurenic derivatives help in reducing the IOP by increasing the trabecular meshwork outflow. Thank you, Dr. Amrita. Over to uh, the panel. Good, uh, good, good pres uh, presentation, Amrita. Like, um, what uh, uh, what what is the complica complication of uh, rock inhibitor? Uh, one complication is corneal verticillitis. Uh, that is word like deposition of the drug or metabolic products in the epithelium of the cornea. And what 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 is that uh, uh, look classically called? Honeycombing, right? Mm? Okay, uh, uh, and it. Uh, uh, it's been reported in a trust model. And, and uh, does it really affect uh, vision? And uh, uh, does it uh, stay like once once it happens? Is, is, is it good? So once we stop the stop using the medication, it will reverse back. So when the honey, uh, honeycombing is there, is the vision really affected? Actually, not actually not that uh, uh, not that much. And uh, what is Another potential benefit uh, that you can have um, if you're using uh, uh, rock kinase inhibitors uh, perioperatively in cataract surgery? Sir, uh, actually, in, uh, it uh, increases the corneal endothelial cell complex. Uh, in flux endothelial dystrophy, you know, we can use uh, rock uh, kinase inhibitors as a treatment. Uh, it doesn't increase the uh, 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 content. Uh, it, it has got, uh, uh, I mean, some studies have shown that it has a endothelial uh, uh, protective uh, uh, action and uh, uh, potentially it can be used in eyes with uh, uh, low endothelial count and function in cataract surgery. Uh, uh, good presentation. Thank you. Yeah, very good presentation. Uh... Amrita, so it causes corneal verticillata, it also causes corneal reticular cysts. Both of, uh, so it's one drug which doesn't have any systemic uh, complication. So you also need to know washout of drugs. So what is the washout? What is What do you mean by washout? What is the washout of uh, rho kinase inhibitor? What is half-life? What is washout? you'll need to know. It's important to know. Okay. So like, for, I'll give you an example. I won't tell you for rho kinase inhibitors. It's very short. But what I'll tell you, like, say for a oral acetazolamide, it is three days. For a topical dorsolamide is a week. For a brinzolamide is two weeks. For timolol is four weeks. That's the washout. That means once you stop the drug, you'll want to wait for around four to six uh, weeks to check the pressure if your the patient is on a beta blocker or a prostaglandin analog okay uh, so uh, what is your dosage of a rokinase inhibitor uh, it's 0.04% uh, like twice daily twice daily and uh, nitrosodil uh, 0.02% and how how often do you use it but actually in my hospital we have ripatec only Okay, Ripatec is a trade name, so you should be saying Ripasudil or Netrasudil. Okay, so Netrasudil, the advantage is once a day. And yes, uh, why does it cause redness in the eye? Because of um, blood flow. Yes, you said it, because it causes a dilatation of the episcleral vessels. It also reduces the episcleral venous pressure. 
So it causes dilatation and outflow. That's why there is redness. So patients will come and ask you, you have to tell them that is the mechanism of action of the drug. So you also have an increased incidence of subconjunctival hemorrhage in these patients. So you need to tell these patients in advance that your eyes will be red. Don't get worried by that. You can get at times uh, uh, chances that it gets more red. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, overall, a very good presentation. Well, I'll just uh, uh, take from what, uh, what uh, Vinit sir. Uh, I'll like, uh, you, uh, would you would you use uh, uh, rock and inhibitors as a primary drug? Uh, no, sir. We usually use it as a second line drug. Uh, See, what, what is the congestion and uh, uh, the complaints with the uh, what else? Um, Rather than conjunctival hyperemia is the main complaint, the subconjunctival hemorrhage, then uh, allergic conjunctivitis and blepharitis. Um, the IOP lowering, uh, IOP lowering effect is not as good as. Uh, uh, that it's not as good as the other first line uh, commonly used drug. So we use it as second line drug. So it, it has an actually all or none phenomenon. You have non uh, responders even here, like you have in Latin or Cross. So sometimes you can have patients whose pressures from 40 fall to 40 and some from uh, 22 will remain 22. So which patients is it a non-responder? Where your trabecular meshwork outflow is not working. Yes. So if you, it causes an outflow through the trabecular meshwork. So if it is sterose and not working, it won't act on these patients. So, and then you have to switch. Good, good, good presentation. But you'll need to know you'll you need to know all glaucoma drugs. Important. And you good. don't use trade names well. Yes. Dr. Shailaja. No questions. Okay. Good presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Amrita.